Some breaking news here on Pittsburgh Steelers Talk before we get into the rest of the previously planned show. Three of the early roster cuts are in for the Steelers. Rondell Carter leads the way. Remember, they signed him in the middle of the preseason. Didn't have a great shot at making the roster. We'll see if he ends up as a practice squad candidate. Former Green Bay Packer and way too early draft pick for his production, Jay Sternberger, also cut by the Steelers. And rounding out our three of which there are no surprises. Lyndon Stevens, one of your backup defensive backs, has also been released by Pittsburgh. They're all practice squad candidates, but they all had no real shot of making the 53-man roster. Throughout this week, Tuesday, final roster cutdown time. Practice squad stuff and other minor roster moves on Wednesday. We're going to keep you guys covered with everything going on around the Pittsburgh Steelers. So if you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe right now as we get into the previously planned show, including some more surprise roster cuts. Hello friends and welcome into Pittsburgh Steelers Talk. I am Tom Downey back once again on the eve of roster cutdown day for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here's what's coming up on today's show. We've got some noteworthy injury updates. Monte Casey, not good news there. We'll break down the Najee Harris injury as well. Some potential surprise roster cuts coming up in, in the next 24-ish hours, give or take, when you're watching for the Steelers. And some new Mason Rudolph trade conversation. First, a question for you guys. Will the Steelers have a better or worse record than last year? Is this the year the above 500 streak stops? Do they have a losing record? Sound off for me in the comment section. B for they'll be better. W for they'll be worse. Just please be on it for me in the comment section. Here's the bad news for Demonte Casey. As we had feared and broken down in our post-game show on Sunday, it is a significant wrist injury for Demonte Casey. He is going to be headed to IR. We'll see if that move is made today or Tuesday or maybe later in the week if you want to try to bring him back. It feels a bit unlikely, though. The wrist surgery, severe injury, that might very well end his year. Quick refresher, by the way, on the IR rules. If you're carried through roster cuts, good news. That means you don't have to be out for the year. You can then be placed on IR, brought back as soon as four weeks later. If you're placed on IR before roster cuts, barring an injury settlement, uh, you're done this year in the NFL. Najee Harris, by the way, also uh, has an injury, a list Frank injury that he's apparently been dealing with since the first padded practice way back when this offseason. Harris says he's now feeling a lot better. He played a decent amount, more than I maybe would have played him in that first preseason game, or that third preseason game, I should say. So I'm not worried about Najee Harris. It shouldn't impact him this year. Seems like he's getting better. Um, I will say I, I do feel better that the Steelers didn't say anything about this, really, until it was in the clear, which, eh, they lied, but, you know, they didn't put, cause any undue stress. So I guess thank you, Pittsburgh. Speaking of fine, that's the status for T.J. Watt and Deontay Johnson. Uh, the knee for Watt, the shoulder for Johnson. Mike Tomlin again saying everything's going to be fine on that front. Don't worry uh, for either guy. They'll be out there for week one. He said uh, mid-game they could have been back in the game if needed. They'll be just fine for week one. Now what I'm asking you guys to do is make sure you don't jinx it today. Let's make sure the Steelers stay healthy. If you do not like this video, that means you are hoping for injuries. And we don't do that here at Chat Sports. That's not cool at all. So send the good vibes, the good energy, the good thoughts into the universe. Like the video to help make sure the Steelers stay healthy this year. Coming up next, some surprise cut candidates for the Steelers as we are on the eve of roster cut down day. Got to go from 80-ish, depending on how many guys you actually have uh, previously cut. It's 80 for Pittsburgh. All the way down to 53. Then you'll make some other adjustments, putting guys, guys on IR, maybe claiming a player or two. But here are some surprise cut candidates. First up, Kendrick Green, the center slash guard. Very much seems like Kevin Dotson is going to be the team's left guard. Green, I was very unimpressed by, unfortunately, in the preseason. I just don't think he fared that well. Pittsburgh's offensive line in general, it's not that good. It, it counts as a surprise cut because I don't think they end up cutting him. I think they'll find a way to retain Green because he can be your backup guard and your backup center. I think that positional uh, flex does carry value, but it also doesn't necessarily mean that's going to continue moving forward. So keep an eye on Green since clearly this regime 
soured on him quickly after just one year. In a way, they haven't soured on Dan Moore Jr. yet. So name a player you think gets cut. Bonus points if you're picking a player people have heard of. Like, of course Pittsburgh is going to cut Chaz Green. We all know that. But if you go with surprise, I'll give you extra credit in the comment section. Let's do the Davis Twins, and by definition of Twins, brothers as well, Khalil and Carlos Davis. Both guys fighting for maybe one of the same roster spots, spots if you're lucky, but between Cam Hayward, Larry Ogunjobi, Tyson Alulu, DeMarvin Leal, Isaiah Loudermilk, Chris Wormley, Montrevis Adams, you could go deep on the defensive line if you wanted to. I've also not been overly impressed with either guy so far, unfortunately. I, I don't think they've... they've you need those guys to splash and pop in the preseason film, and, and they haven't really done that. I'm not sure bad is the way I describe their play, but I also wouldn't call it well. So we'll go with not well and kind of cut the difference there in the middle. Today's show is made possible by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Head over to chatsports.com slash bets and use that promo code right there. The right of my shoulder or left, I guess, depending on which way you're looking. Promo code Steelers125. Put down at least 100 bucks. It's going to give you an extra 125 for free. That is the minimum deposit bonus to get, or minimum deposit to get the bonus. 100 bucks. So you put down 100. They're going to give you free money. You can be reckless to an extent with your bets if that's the route you want to go because you're playing literally with the house's money. You can bet on Pittsburgh to win the AFC North this year. They are last in the odds. The Ravens at plus 140, the Bengals at plus 170, the Browns at plus 375. The odds have changed. Steelers were around plus 900 earlier this offseason. They've come up a little bit. They're now at plus 850. If you bet on them to win and they do win, it's going to be a massive haul. And if you don't, that's okay. You've got a ton of leftover money thanks to the awesome BetUS deposit bonus. One more time for you. It's chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Steelers125. One more surprise cut candidate. How about Miles Boykin? The money could be a factor here. He's a little bit more expensive than you would like uh, for one of your backup wide receivers. Now, we got to figure out what's going to happen with Calvin Austin in the end. Is he healthy? Is he not? Is it going to be a potential IR stash to begin the year? He's been banged up as of late, but you got to think, right? Claypool is going to make this team as long as he's healthy. Johnson. Uh, George Pickens, of course, Gunnar Olszewski is going to make it as well. If Austin makes it, that's five. I've been impressed by Steven Sims. He's made some nice plays in the preseason. He has NFL experience. I would feel confident with either Sims or Boykin as my receiver five slash my receiver six. Depends on Austin there. But if Sims is impressive and they trust him on special teams, that's one of Boykin's best assets. If the Steelers think they can save some money, I'm okay with that since it is receiver five slash six. And in the end, that doesn't really impact your outcome that much in the long run. Let's talk Mason Rudolph here as Rudolph got minimal playing time against the Detroit Lions. He just, he didn't play much. He had three passes the entire game, did not complete a single one. It is very clear from this organization, the pecking order, Mitchell Trubisky's QB one for now. Kenny Pickett is QB2 for now, will eventually become quarterback one, and Mason stuck where we thought he was going to be at the beginning of the offseason. As the veteran who's quarterback three, who isn't making that much money, but he's a backup, I think there are some teams out there that would have a better backup if they acquired it than what they have right now. But that doesn't mean teams do that because, well, if you lose your starter, it's not like Mason's going to save your season anyway. So get your predictions in, then I'm going to go through some destinations here with Mason Rudolph. What team will Rudolph finish this season with? Is it Pittsburgh? Is it somewhere else? Sound off for me in the comment section. In the event the Steelers can find a trade partner for Mason Rudolph, five teams plus a bonus one I'll mention. Detroit Lions, uh, they'd been linked to Mason Rudolph, and Tim Boyle sucks, and David Blau, a.k.a. David Blow, lived up to his last name. Not that much better in that game. The Seattle Seahawks, I... I think they're going to kind of embrace the tank. I kind of wonder if Rudolph's better than Drew Locke, but Drew Locke's an elite tank commander, so we'll keep that in mind. 
Carolina's been hit hard by injuries, not as bad for Sam Darnold. Plus, they love acquiring drafted quarterbacks that they didn't draft and trading for them. So keep that in mind. The Jets, if the Zach Wilson injury is more severe, it's Joe Flacco. He was once elite, allegedly, certainly is not now. The Giants of Daniel Jones, and honestly, I think Davis Webb outplayed him and Tyrod Taylor. Red flags everywhere. And don't rule out the Jacks. I'll mention them because, hey, remember when the last time the Steelers traded away a drafted quarterback to a team? It was Jacksonville, Joshua Dobbs. I don't think they go that route again, but it's at least worth, worth mentioning as the sixth option beyond the top five there. That is the end of today's Pittsburgh Steelers Talk video. Thank you all so much if you got all the way through to the end. You are a real one, and I want to show you some love. If you type in here we go in the comments section, we'll show you some love down there. So spam it for me right now.